Hi there, this is Unmation. Today I'm going to show you how to remove glare from glasses in the worst case scenario. Now, what do I mean by worst case scenario and why a worst case scenario? Now, here's what you should do. When you click a subject with the glasses, take a picture of the subject and then ask the subject to take off the glasses or ask your assistant to take off the glasses. She or he stays in the same position. You stay in the same position. You take one more picture, exact same picture without the glasses. Then in Photoshop, if the glasses have glare, you already have the image of the eyes without the glass. You take that image and place it over there, stack them up together and then just mask in the eyes. As simple as that. However, if it's not possible for the subject to take off the glasses, if you have forgotten to take off the glasses of the subject, in that case, this is the tutorial for you. It's going to take some time, but it will be fun. And I have chosen a challenging image. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. So the first thing that we have to do is to remove the color cast from the glass. So let's zoom in by holding the spacebar key and the control or command, hold them together, drag it to the right to zoom in, drag it left to zoom out. So zoom in. Now we need to remove the color cast. How to do that? Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Then I brought it down so that you have a closer look bigger hue saturation if it's small right over there or anywhere just make sure you just drag it you bring it down you just expand it make it bigger because we're going to make extensive use of this one now we want to target this color this cyan or greenish color click on the hand tool and just click once over there so we have that targeted now how does this work let's understand that first if we change the hue and saturation the hue and saturation of just that color changes Make sense? No? Let me make it sense for you. All right, let's reset that. Okay. Now, for example, we chose reds. The top bar, okay, here are two bars, right? The top bar is the complete color spectrum of the image. The bottom bar is the target. So, for example, we want to target the oranges and the reds, the skin tone. So, we will select this. And this is the target. This is the range that we are targeting. Right, so we target this area. We have not made any changes yet. See what happens when we make a change. Suppose we change the hue and the saturation. Let's make it softer. See the skin tone changes. What along with the skin tone changes? Have a look at the top bar. The top bar is the same, but the bottom bar has changed to green and so is the skin. So if we change the hue, have a look again. Look at the bottom bar. It is bluish. The skin is also bluish. And that's how this works. Look at the top bar. The top bar remains the same. It just shows that oranges to yellows are selected. That area in the color spectrum is selected and we are making a change over there. That's all there is. So let's reset that again and do what we had to do. With the hand tool selected, click on over this area. And as you can see, the stands are selected right now. Increase the hue and saturation just to see which areas are selected. Not whole of it is selected, so we need to make a change. We need to expand it just to this point. Now we need to work on each eye one by one in this case because it is a little different. Okay. So this is perfect. Let's make it smoother by taking the second slider off the, off the left hand side. This just makes the transition smooth. Okay. Let's take it to the right. It's okay. I think it's enough. All right. Now let's bring it to zero back again. And we will try moving the hue, whether that helps or not. No, that is not helping. Let's take away the color. We will have to repaint it. Sometimes what happens is when you select it, select the glare, all you have to do, just move the hue and it just sets back to normal. But in this case, this is a difficult image. We need to repaint it. So let's bring back the hue to zero and just decrease the saturation all the way to minus 100. We took away the color. Okay, now let's repaint that. Let's zoom in quite a bit. And before we repaint it, let's match the brightness. Because if you have a look at the glare, it's brighter than the other areas. Now how to match the brightness and this will help you a lot. First of all, create a solid color adjustment layer. Okay. Choose any neutral color, white, black, whatever. Make sure it has no color, it is neutral. 
hit OK. Then change the blend mode of this one from normal to color. It seems like it turns your image black and white and yes it does. However, this allows you to see the amount of light accurately. If the amount of light is high, it will be brighter. If the amount of light is low, it will be darker. So we can clearly see which areas are bright and we have to make them darker. You might think, okay, we just should have simply created a black and white adjustment layer. No, that is different. That is not an actual representation of the amount of light. Have a look. This is different than this. If I turn this off, turn this on, have a look at the difference. If you cannot spot the difference, let me go back to history and let's go back to this one. Okay, look at the difference. This and this. Very tiny difference, but if, I, if you zoom out, you'll be able to see it more clearly. This and this. Both are different. Have a look at the lip. So this is very accurate, this one, the colorful layer. So make sure you create a colorful layer, neutral color, change the blend mode to color. That way you will be able to see the bright area. Now we need to darken it. How do we darken it? Let's create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Now let's take up the properties over there and let's make it smaller. It's very big. Okay, that is great. Now we need to just darken it. Take the slider to the left like that and probably darken it from the left. Okay, now with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. Zoom in quite a bit. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white. White are the areas which show up, black are the areas which do not show up. So let's paint inside of this one. The brush is very big. Let's make it smaller. Make sure it's soft and just paint. Flow should be low. 10% is good and then just paint. Let's make it 5%. Make sure you match in the darkness of the eyelashes. Lashes. Looks pretty good. Have a look. This is the after and this is the before. After, before, after. So we need to erase around the edges. It's too much. Okay. Let's have a look again. Before, after, before, after. Pretty good. Let's zoom out and have a look at it. Looks pretty good. Before, after. We need to darken some areas around here. So with white, we'll just paint. We painted a little extra on the outside and that's why it's very dark. So we'll paint this area in black again. And we have to clone the edges. That's something we have to do. Let's zoom out and have a look again. It's pretty good. Before, after, before, after. Pretty much matching. Let's zoom in. Let's paint white inside here. Okay. We took care of that. If you want, you can increase it even more. But that would destroy the whole image. So we will create one more curves adjustment layer just for the inside. And we will take it down like that. With the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. And we will paint on the inside with white. Before, after. Okay. Looks great. Let's zoom out and have a look. So here is the before. Let's make a group of both of these curves adjustment layer. Press Ctrl or Command G. Before, after, before, after. Matching looks pretty good. Now we don't need this. Turn it off or just, just delete it. Now we need to color this. How do we color this? Simple as well. Create a new layer and you can name this color. Okay. Let's zoom in or you can also name it color right or the right inside. All right. With the brush selected, hold the Alt or Option to take a sample of this color, sample of the nearby color and just simply paint. And if you just simply paint over here, make sure the flow is low. It's very flat, right? We don't want that to happen. We want to change the color. So change the blend mode simply to color. And that's how you color it. When you're taking the sample, make sure the sample size is not point sample. So let's go to the eyedropper tool and make sure it's something like five by five or 11 by 11. Let's choose five by five. If it's point sample, here's what's gonna happen. If I sample, if I change the sample, see how rapidly it's changing and you might sample the noise. You might sample the wrong color. That's why stay at five by five. It creates a square of five by five pixels and takes average color of that. Okay. And then let's come back to the brush. Hold the alter option and just simply paint over there. Zoom in. If you zoom in even more, it gets pixelated. Let's take a sample of this color and paint it over here. You can also take samples from 
the other eye as well. And as you can see, this eye has also been affected by the hue saturation adjustment layer. So here's what we can also do. Select the mask of this one, press Ctrl or Command I, and then just paint around this one. With the brush, make sure white is the color, foreground, and just paint around this flow, 100, and okay. We just wanted to affect this. Let's go back to the color, and let's decrease the flow to 5%, or let's say 6 or 7%, 7% is good. Zoom in with the brush, keep on sampling, keep on painting. Similar areas, like that. Zoom in, not so much. Now this is for the worst case scenario. Let's take a sample from here and paint over here. Zoom out a bit so that you can look. Let's increase the flow to 20%. Looks pretty good, not bad. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, this is the before. We painted that. Now it looks much more natural. Let's take a sample of this color over there and paint at the top of that. Okay, this is perfect. Now let's paint on the inside of the eye. We might have painted a little extra. So we will have to erase it. So with the eraser, let's erase beneath this. Let's take the brush again and sample this area and paint over there. Okay, now let's sample the eye. Paint. Easy. If you want, you can also sample from the other eye, but this is perfect. Have a look, before, after. Much better. I think this area is a little brighter, so we'll go back to the curves, this second curves, and just with white, just paint in this area. Before, after. Much better. Zoom out and have a look. It's gone, it's actually gone. Now there's a little bit of white left, brightness left over there. Let's go back to this curve and paint white in, make sure the flow is low again, 5%, and we will, it's going back and forth, and as I said, it's gonna take time. Okay. That line is still there, we have to get rid of that, no problem at all. Now let's work on the left eye. So for the left eye, do the same thing. Hue saturation, let's create one more hue saturation, just like that, and do the same thing. With the hand tool, just sample this color right over there, and take the hue all the way to the right, this one, and make sure, move it, make sure this color is selected. Okay, that's, oh, that's okay. It's very impossible to remove this color. It's impossible, it's, it seems impossible, we'll try, but I see no point. So we don't need for the second one. For the second one, we will color it directly. Now you might ask, why did you remove the color from this first, you should have directly colored it. Now here's the answer. Sometimes, as I said before, what happens is, you don't have to do any of the steps. Just hue saturation, move the hue, move the saturation and it's gone. Just in this case, we are having to color it in extreme scenarios, okay? And that's why it's necessary to check with the hue saturation adjustment layer. Plus, it makes the process much more simpler than with the color. Okay, now in this case, we have to match the brightness, but we have deleted that check layer. More on check layers in this tutorial. We have deleted the check layer, which checks the amount of light. We shouldn't have, but we can create that again. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. Choose any neutral color that you like, hit okay. Change the blend mode to color. Move it all the way to the top. Okay. Now the brightness, if you have a look, it looks not that bad, but we can also create a curves adjustment layer one more time. Make it a little darker like that. From the left, okay. And then with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. Then just simply paint in this area with the brush selected make sure the foreground color is white and flow five percent is good you will just darken it here easy right zoom out and have a look at it before after before after if you want you can also darken out this area just follow the line
that's okay before after all right now you can take your time fine tune it later but we have done the basic stuff okay now let's color it let's turn it off right now let's come back to the color right you can do it in the same or you can create a new layer as well so you can just name it color left and this is just for organization purposes take the brush just sample this color and simply paint right over there as simple as that now it is flat color we need to change the blend mode to color okay you can increase the flow if you want to 30 percent 20 percent because this is just coloring and you can replace the stuff they keep taking sample see which areas color looks good Just make sure the green is removed. Yeah, it seems fine to me. Pretty good. Zoom out and have a look at the color before, after. That is gone. Looks perfect. Okay. Have a look at the complete before and after. So this is the before. This is the after totally gone now what we can do you can use the healing brush tool to get rid of all this let's delete this we don't need it finally we don't need it let's create a new layer you can name this healing let's choose the regular healing brush tool not the spot one the regular one let's zoom in even more let's take a sample from this area hold the alt or option take a sample and paint make sure current and below is checked normal sampled diffusion is five that's the standard number over there that line is removed yep okay here as well if you want to remove this line done removed gone wonderful now I think this area also needs to be a little darkened so we can create one more curves or you can do it with the same but it's always safe to create one more because you don't want to fiddle with the previous things with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. With the brush, foreground color white, we can just match it. Flow 10% is fine this time. Yes, now that is wonderful. Yep, we are done. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Completely gone. So that's how to remove glare from glasses in the worst case scenario. Always keep in mind, while you're taking the picture of the subject with glasses, take a picture with the glasses, take one picture without it, stack them up together and just mask in the eyes from the second image without the glasses. That's the best way to do it. However, if you have taken the picture, you've forgotten it or you just have one picture and there is the glare, this is the way to do it. All you have to do, first of all, add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Sometimes if you just target the color and move the slider of hue and saturation, it just goes away. If it doesn't go away, then you have to create a curves adjustment layer, match the brightness. To help you match the brightness, you can create a check layer of luminance. You can do that by creating a solid color adjustment layer. Choose a neutral color, change the blend mode to color. That way you will see the amount of color just as a black and white image. Then. Using a curve, match the brightness. Once you match the brightness, simply create a new layer and then color it. Just sample the color and color it and change the blend mode of the color layer to color. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful and if this was, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever by supporting us on Patreon. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.